What's going on guys, today we are taking a look at the DV988 by Blue Sky C. It is a motorcycle dash cam that allows you to record front and rear footage at 1080p. It comes with a touchscreen display which will allow you to make changes on the fly, take pictures, and even use as a parking assist. But before we get into all the features, let's take a look at what's included in the box. All right, so the first thing we're gonna have here is the touchscreen display. It is also gonna be water resistant, so you should not have any issues riding with this in the rain. Also included is a 32 gigabyte micro USD card to capture all of your footage. We have the power cables here. You have two options, a USB power cable if your bike supports that, or a hardware kit if it doesn't. There's also extension cables for the cameras that are included and a GPS module for tracking your speed. So with this unit, we're gonna have a front and a rear camera. The housing on these are gonna be made of some kind of metal or aluminum so they should be pretty durable also included it comes with a microphone module that also lets you take pictures and lock your footage and the last thing you get is all the mounting tape and the hardware kit for all of the setup now as far as installation goes it's actually not too complicated i'm not going to go over in detail step by step because everybody's bike is going to be different and everybody's preferred mounting locations will also be different but i am going to go over the basic setup that i used on my bike and hopefully this will be very similar when you install yours all right so the first thing i did is find a spot for the touchscreen display it does come with the mounting bracket that goes on your handlebars but as far as being able to move it and face it any way you want the bracket that it comes with it is kind of limited the good news is that the back of the display uses a GoPro style hardware so you can actually use GoPro accessories or even RAM mount accessories to get this exactly how you want it. But just take note, there is a lot of wires coming off of one side of the display, so keep that in mind when picking a location. For my setup on my scout bobber, I ended up moving my phone mount and installing the display on the left side of my bars, which allowed me to tuck the wires right underneath the speedometer without too much of the wires sticking out and looking messy. And for those of you that don't care too much for the display or don't like the look of a big display always sitting on your handlebars or worried about somebody stealing it, just know that you can actually put the touchscreen display in a more discreet location like under a seat or even a storage area on your bike almost everything that is controlled through the display can also be controlled on your phone through the app so having the display out in the open is actually not required once I got the display all set up, next was the cameras. On my bobber here, there's not too many places I can hide these cameras. So for now, I placed the front camera on top of the headlight using the GoPro mount. It does have an included bracket that allows you to tilt the camera up and down, but the mounting surface on that bracket is flat and I couldn't find a location on my bike where to use that. So I did use the GoPro curve mount instead. Later on, I will be moving my cameras to a more discreet location. So for this front camera and pretty much all the wires that are coming off of the display, I tucked right underneath the handlebar bars and behind the headlight. Once I got the front camera all hooked up, next I moved on to the power cable. For me, the USB power cable was the easiest to use, so I ran that also underneath the handlebars, behind the headlight, and then to the right where the USB port is. I did the same thing with the mic adapter, under the bars, behind the headlight, up to the right side of the handlebars. I used the provided 3M tape and zip ties to get that in place. Next was the GPS module. Once again, same thing under the handlebars and this time to the left side and placed it right on the frame. All right, so now the last thing was the rear camera. What was nice about this bike is that there's already wires coming from the left side all the way to the back to where the battery compartment is. So it made it super easy because I didn't have to take the tank off to run any of the wires. I actually just followed the existing wires down underneath the gas tank and into the battery area underneath the seat. All I had to do was zip tie the camera wire to the other wires in one or two locations. For this, I did also have to use the included camera wire extension to reach all the way to the back of the bike. Once I ran the wire to the battery section, then I decided to mount the camera where I wanted before hiding the extra wire that was left over. Now, if I had decided to use a hardwire cable instead of using the USB wire, I would have ran the power cable right alongside the rear camera cable to the battery compartment where I would have connect the black wire and the red wire to the battery and the yellow wire to like the ignition fuse, which would allow the dash cam to turn on and off with the bike. Okay, so going back to the rear camera, at first I mounted the rear camera to the tail end, but after looking at the camera footage, it was way too shaky. So I ended up moving the camera closer to the seat on the rear fender, which made it a huge Huge improvement. It's not my ideal place where I would want it, but it'll do for now. So just know that you will have to try different areas to get that perfect location where the footage is good and it also looks good on your bike. Once I got the camera where I wanted, then the access wire I just tucked in under the seat in the battery compartment area. And that was pretty much it for installation. It wasn't too difficult. It's pretty much a matter of figuring out the best spot for everything and just hiding the wires. 
Now what makes this dash cam pretty cool is that as soon as you turn your bike on, the unit also turns on and automatically starts to record so you never have to worry about having to hit record or not capturing your footage. You can also turn off the automatic record if you want, but I just leave mine on. The footage will record on a loop, so once your card is full, it'll just record over the oldest footage. And you could always buy a higher capacity card for more storage. Now you have a few options when you want to look at your footage. Now you could either look at it on the display right on your bike. You can take the micro SD card and watch it on the computer or install the app and watch it on your phone. You could even download the footage onto your phone if you would like. Now with the app on your phone, you can also start and stop the recordings or even take pictures. There is also GPS to track your speed and a shock mode that saves your footage in SOS file when your bike senses like a crash. Now there is a little bit more features and other stuff that you can find in the menu, but as far as the important stuff that you need to know about this unit, that's pretty much it. Now that I have it all mounted, let's take a look at the recorded footage and you can decide for yourself if this dash cam might work for you. Alright guys, so that was it. Let me know what you guys thought about this setup. Overall, I thought the quality was pretty good. I definitely like the fact that you can record front and rear footage and it turns on automatically as soon as you start your bike. Even if you completely forget about it, it's always gonna be recorded. The one thing, as you notice, I did have to change the location of the mic. Having it on the handlebars, the wind was hitting it directly, which made the sound horrible. So you will have to play around with it and move some stuff around just to be able to get the best possible audio out of this thing. Same thing goes with the camera location. Well, that was it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate you guys being here and we'll catch you guys next time. Peace out.